Hello everyone, I'm very happy to present you Margaret, Bane, Jiva and me, Maria. Today's topic will be about bioremediation. But what is bioremediation? Hmm, and what does remediate mean? So many questions! Let me explain you the topic and be ready to take some notes. Let me first explain you what is remediate. Word remediate means to correct something that is wrong or damaged or to improve a bad situation. And bioremediation is the process of removing or breaking down pollutants from contaminated sites using organisms. You should know that there are three types of bioremediation methods. First, we have microremediation, which uses fungus. Secondly, we have phytoremediation, which uses plants. And finally, we have bacteria bioremediation, which, as its name explicitly tells, uses bacteria. On this video, we will focus on this last method. There are two types of microbes used in bioremediation. First, the aerobic microbes, which are commonly used because they require oxygen to grow. Second, the anaerobic microbes, which grow without oxygen. In bioremediation, we have two types of treatments, in situ and ex situ. In situ means that we remediate the pollutants on site. Ex situ, on the other hand, means that we extract the contaminated site or pump out the contaminated water of location at which it was found and take it somewhere else for bioremediation. Hmm, you might still wonder how does it work or how bacteria can rid of pollutants. Let me explain you about the bioremediation process then. Let's take an example of an oil spill from petroleum cargo. Here we have ocean, petroleum cargo leaks oil or there is an accident, as it happened in the Mexican Gulf 2010. Bioremediation uses bacteria in the ocean to break down the oil. Ok folks, now comes really hard name, Alcanivarex borcomensis, a good oil eating bacteria living in the ocean and only blooms when oil is present. The bacteria releases enzymes such as starch and sugar which breaks down oil particles so that it is easier for bacteria to eat the oil. The bacteria will digest the oil and release water and harmless gases such as carbon dioxide. The cycle repeats until the food sources run out. There are some specific conditions for microbes to work better. First, we need oxygen in the water. Second, there should be enough nutrients in the ocean. And the third, the water temperature should be around 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. There are different biological techniques to grow and stimulate bacteria for an effective bioremediation. We have first the bioaugmentation and the second, biostimulation. Bioaugmentation is the process to add the pre-grown microbial culture to enhance the degradation of the contaminants. And in the biostimulation process, we add nutrients to contaminate a site in order to stimulate or help the bacteria already on the site to work faster and efficiently to break down the contaminants. Bioremediation has advantages and disadvantages. First, it is a cost effective. Bioremediation is a permanent solution and it doesn't require extensive equipment and labor. Most importantly, it's a nature-based process. Regarding disadvantages, it takes time from months to years to completely treat a contaminated site. Bioremediation can be challenging to measure and see the results over time. Therefore, it's less predictable than conventional techniques. And some pollutants such as heavy metals cannot be completely broken down. To conclude, bioremediation is an environmentally friendly approach because it allows microbes as a natural organisms to degrade toxic compounds. Advanced technology has made bioremediation as one of the most developing methods to restore environment. Thank you for listening and we hope that you have now better understanding of bioremediation. You may see that after all bacteria are not so bad and actually 
they can be our savers. <laughs>